Alright, I'm uh, ready to start the uh, Lava Dome. This is the uh, last fire area. Uh, I seem to recall it is fairly long. Uh, and it's got these guys. Uh, they, uh, I think, petrify quite often. So I'll be uh, trying to kill them ASAP. Uh, vampires now. Uh, it's the uh, first time we see these uh, sprites. Another good soundtrack uh, song. Uh, yeah, so the, the game does. I really do like the music a lot. Uh, you know, I think it along with like uh, Mega Man X. Uh, you know, they're some of my favorite game soundtracks. Uh, it'd be kind of cool if uh, some other you know, more recent Final Fantasy to go this route, this route with their uh, soundtrack. Mm. You know, have like the kind of uh, rock style mm. instead of the uh, orchestral stuff that they typically do. Mm. There's a uh, item around here somewhere. I like a special item. Uh, I think there's a spell.
Oh, one thing I uh, remember that I wanted to kind of talk about is the, uh, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, give it grief for the, uh, automatically changing equipment and, like, the simplified equipment. You know, you get to a town and there'll be, uh, like, one piece of armor that you just buy from someone and then it, like, automatically equips, uh, and then that's it. I find that's, you know, compared to, you know, really what a lot of the JRPGs of the time did, I think that's probably just a, you know, better, less, uh, you know, tedious system. Because, uh, I don't know, like, it's better these days, you know, you, you typically have more, uh, you know, real choice with what you're going to with your characters. But, uh, a lot of, like, the Dragon Quest, uh, Final Fantasy and stuff at the time, uh, it was basically just you got to a town and then, uh, you know, you, your whole party had, like, leather armor equipped and so you went to the armor shop and sold all your leather stuff and then, uh, you know, started buying, uh, you know, iron stuff and then, you know, so you spend 20 minutes you know, selling stuff and buying stuff and just messing around in the menus, and then, you know, you end up just with a flat defense bonus. It's, you know, there's not really any choice to make. There's no, oh, do I, uh, you know, equip this or that, or, uh, you know, do I take a, you know, a weight penalty to have more defense, or, you know, like, there, there's no real choices to be made. Uh, so if it's going to be like that, it might as well just be something where, you know, you just walk in, you pay your 600 gold, get the upgraded shield, and then that's it. Uh, yeah, got this. Uh, so there we go, again, uh, fire resistance. That'll help uh, in this dungeon, and especially I think the boss uses a uh, fair bit of fire attacks. At the time, even like weapons and stuff, you know, you might have, you know, maybe the next best weapon that you would get would be like ice elemental or whatever. But then after that, you would just end up getting, uh, you know, better normal ones. So you're not gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna stay with the weak ice elemental one or whatever. You're just gonna keep going with the obvious next strongest weapon. So you know, n there wasn't really any choice to be made, it, you know, most of the time you were just doing the obvious thing, just, you know, get the next best one and keep going. I think that kind of applies to a lot of, uh, you know, Mystic Quest, uh, you know, it mostly it takes a lot of, like, the tedium out of, uh, what, you know, a lot of the JRPGs of the time had. You know, it removes the random encounters, uh, you know, simplifies the, uh, the combat there. It, you know, there's no fancy, like, act of time battle or limit break or anything like that. But, uh, you know, most of them, again, they weren't really, you know, in-depth strategy stuff. It was usually just, okay, use your best ability and, you know, on some turns your best ability would be, like, your limit break or whatever. And so you can use that, and it, you know, there never really was any choices. So. Mm. You know, like the AI is kind of the same there. Like, yeah, you can set it to auto, but uh, you know, I think the fact that the, you know, aside from how the auto can cheat with the, uh, the reviving, uh, mm. you know, the fact that the auto can do you know, with whatever fairly simple al algorithm it's probably using, the fact that it can, you know, function as well as the player could, I think kind of tells you, you know, uh, you know, that there really isn't that much depth there to begin with. Uh, 
you know, people complained about that in Final Fantasy XII, that the Gambit system kind of, you know, took all the fun out of playing it, but, you know, the, the Gambit system, I think, was really, you know, that was obviously showing, like, okay, this is what you're doing in your head anyways. Like, you're just saying, okay, is anybody low health? Should I heal them? No. Okay, is it a boss? Should I use my, you know, expensive magic to hit them with? No. Okay, then I'll use then I'll use fight and my mage will defend. And you know that's just the algorithm that you would use uh, yourself. Uh, you know, anyway. So might as well just let the uh, gambit system do that, or you know the a the auto mode in this. You know, I do always find that really kind of ironic when, uh, you see this a lot with, like, real hardcore JRPG fans when, uh, they're talking about other genres and they're like, oh, you know, we don't want Final Fantasy VII Remake to be just some, like, meathead, uh, you know, action game where you just mash the buttons, we, you know, we want our highbrow, uh, tactical, uh, gameplay, but, you know, it really wasn't that, uh, there's not that much strategy in the world. Yeah, you do see a lot of these kind of, I don't know, I think modern, there's a lot of modern JRPGs where they're like, okay, we want to be like a classic JRPG, but without like the silly stuff, so, you know, like in Bravely Default, uh, you, you can just turn off random encounters, or turn them on to like double rate, uh, which, you know, that just kind of removes the key, and, and you can go all the way through the dungeon, you know, explore and stuff. And then, uh, you know, when, if you want to level up, you can turn them on to, like, double rate and uh, do your grinding quickly. You know, there was stuff like the Brave Default System that, uh, you know, really kind of speeds up the combat there. You're like, okay, you're just going to be selecting fight over and over again for six turns, so why not just let you get six turns worth of fight command in at once and be done with it? next level, uh, I'll get the uh, next bar there, my health, the next uh, line, it would have been nice if there was some grenades in there. Kind of worried I'll accidentally uh, cast exit, I won't do that, that would be a bother.
So those salamanders uh, on the map, they have never looked like uh, salamanders to me. They look more like uh, just like guys in robes or something. there. really is nice having uh, BB or Kaylee on the team instead of Ruben uh, being able to just leave them on auto and have them uh, handle the healing without burning through all the healing items mm. is uh, much nicer.
Silver Bombs. I really hope there's no more uh, spots where I have to bomb like there was before. Uh, at least they might, uh, at least if there is, they, they may give me a chest with some in it. If I get the uh, flare spell. Mm -hmm. There. Uh, it doesn't do very much damage. Uh, it does do a bunch of uh, status effects, but uh, mm. it seems like most enemies resist most of them anyways. Uh, the only thing is I think mm. the Dragon Claw, the, uh, the next claw you get there. Uh, I think there are a couple enemies where if you hit them with it, they like just die pretty much, because it does uh, like all the status effects or something. Uh, I don't know really exactly what or something uh, like that, where certain enemies you just kill them by hitting them with Dragon Claw. I kind of wish I had more uh, J JRPGs as a kid. Uh, you know, like, these days, the only way I can really stand playing most of them is, uh, you know, if I'm emulating them and fast forwarding. Because otherwise, I find you know the battles in most of them just take so long. And, you know, it's not really worth it to you know spend 80 hours playing a JRPG that you know really you're only actually like doing stuff for like 20 hours. And the rest of it's just like watching the battle animations and stuff. And, you know, slow map movement and stuff like that. But you know, back when I was a kid, you know, you only had you know, you got your one game for Christmas or whatever, or two games, and then that was it for your birthday. Uh, you know, it would have been nice to have a few more of them then, but uh, yeah, really just Mystic Quest, uh, you know, Soul Blazer and Ninja Boys. Those were really the only ones I had. Uh, I don't think I uh, really got any other ones in Super Nintendo there. Uh, of course, I did have, like, you know, uh, I did have some, you know, lots of really good games. Uh, uh, like, uh, you know, Super Metroid, uh, Zelda. I'm 
no surprise that that's the uh, first time we've gotten uh, petrified by those guys. Normally they're just petrifying you like constantly, but uh, it's been lucky. I did have a Dragon Quest on the, uh, the Dragon Warrior, I guess, on the NES there. Uh, but again, I, you know, same with uh, like Final Fantasy 1 there on the, uh, on the NES. I never really played it that much. Uh, I'm not sure, I guess probably it was just the difficulty, you know, I, Probably just died a whole bunch and didn't know where to go, and then just kind of gave up. Uh, I did play through that one again uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, I haven't played as many of the Dragon Quest games, uh, but yeah, I have played a few. I and I went through uh, one on the NES a couple years ago. Uh, I think I played through part of two as well uh, a couple years ago there. Uh, I had the pack of I think one and three on the Game Boy Color. Uh, actually, when yeah, when my uh, Mario Kart 64 got uh, stolen by uh, one of the neighbor kids. Uh, his, I don't know, his mom made, made him, like, uh, give money, or give me money, because he, like, I don't know, he lost the game or whatever. Uh, and so I used that to buy the, uh, Dragon Quest, uh, 1 and 3 pack on the, uh, Game Boy. Uh, I never beat 3 on it, uh, but I did get, uh, very far. I think I, actually what I did was, uh, same as what I was talking about before, just uh, spending forever grinding and messing around with side quests and stuff like that, and then losing interest. Because that game has, uh, you know, it's got a lot of side stuff you can do. I think it was made somewhat worse by the fact that I actually had the uh, like Prima player's guide for it. So, you know, I, I could search through and find where like all the tiny metals and stuff were. So I just spent forever like looking through the guide, getting all the tiny metals and all the other side stuff. Dragon Quest Monsters games there on uh, the Game Boy Color. Uh, played one a lot, and then uh, two came out, and uh, uh, me and one of the neighbor kids both played it quite a bit. Yeah, I had the player's guide for that too, uh, which was nice because uh, you know it meant I could find all you know all the uh, long, complicated uh, you know breeding patterns to get the best monsters. Couple years ago, I played through the uh, remake of Dragon Quest Monsters on the uh, 3DS. Uh, I, I don't remember if it came out here, but uh, 
shortly after I got my... Uh, well, I got a 2DS to play Pokemon X uh, back when it came out. Uh, I played you know, a fair amount of games on that. Uh, but then uh, when the uh, new 3DS came out, uh, I ordered a Japanese one so I could uh, play like import games. Uh, and since at that point uh, 3DS had been out for like I don't know, four years or whatever, I don't remember, but you know, several years anyways, uh, there was a pretty big back catalog of uh, you know 3DS games. Uh, Lots of cheap used ones you can get online, uh, and lots of like uh, Japan exclusives. So yeah, I imported uh, just tons of them. I played through uh, I don't know, just uh, I don't know, probably like a new one every couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I just brought it to work and just played it, you know, uh, on my breaks all the time. I, I'm kind of concerned here, because uh, if I recall correctly, once we kill the boss, uh, this area will... Uh, I don't think we can get back in here. Uh, for, for some reason, I think that once we... Uh, yeah, once I kill the boss, I don't think I can get back into this level. And I don't think I have all the items yet. Probably doesn't matter, but uh, I think I'm just gonna go uh, pause for a second here and just check to see if uh, I've got all the items.